The talks between the Polisario Front and the Moroccan government have been taking place behind closed doors in this building, 40 kilometers from New York. Journalists were not allowed in the building. The pressure on these talks is high considering the violence that has descended on the region in the recent days. Our correspondent Anna Bresenin spoke to the main participants after the latest session of negotiations and it seems the only outcome of the talks is more talks. The participants agreed to convene again in December as well as early next year to pursue through innovative approaches the negotiating process for which the United Nations Security Council resolutions have called. Shukran. Merci. Thank you. How have these talks gone? Are you optimistic? Well, I won't hide the fact that the circumstances under which these talks have taken place have been far from easy given the situation. What's happened in Laun is a tragedy. There are dead and wounded. Even on the day of the negotiations, so for us it appears a deliberate decision to derail the talks, to cast doubt over their viability. It was an element which coloured the atmosphere a bit, but there was the possibility to discuss in depth. What do you think will be the next step in Geneva? What are you going to talk about? In Geneva, we'll continue to talk about the visiting program for families separated by the war. But now I think the international community, the United States, has realized, after the tragic events in Laun, the need to concentrate efforts to find a fair and definitive solution. Morocco is a neighbor. We still want to take Morocco into consideration. That's why we've offered, if there's independence, privileged relations. But you don't want autonomy. Autonomy is one choice, but it mustn't be the only choice for the Sahrawi people. We still want a referendum where there are several options as defined by the United Nations. The Western Sahara question has become more than a long-running dispute between geographical neighbours. It's become an issue of security, with the emergence of Al-Qaeda organisation in the Islamic Maghreb, which has carried out several attacks and kidnappings. A group of Spanish aid workers were taken in 2007 in Mauritania, and earlier this year they kidnapped and murdered the Frenchman Michel Germano. Our reporter raised the question with both sides. Do you think there will be international pressure for a faster solution now that there are concerns over a real international terrorism threat in the Sahrawi region? There's no terrorism in our land. It's something Morocco wants to use to confuse everyone. Terrorism is a global threat. We've said to Morocco that we're ready to cooperate with Morocco and with all interested powers in the future, but Morocco has refused. It's not just the security threat. Of course, it's there and raises its head daily. The community are asking us for cooperation between the countries of the region. But there's also something highlighted by the international community, that is, the persistent differences and the fact that there's no progress because of, unfortunately, a rigid stance by other parties. We haven't taken advantage of all the possible opportunities and offers in economic terms. So it's not just a case of security, there are economic demands too. Euronews also tackled the Moroccan foreign minister about the lack of foreign media covering the clashes in Western Sahara. Why are there no foreign journalists in Layoun? There are many journalists who went. There are many who were stopped. Unfortunately, coming to add fuel to the fire is not something we expect from a professional journalist. Journalists have a right, a fundamental right, that we respect and encourage a lot in Morocco. To report and analyze. But you can't have certain journalists putting their desires as reality. Or distancing themselves from orthodoxy and above all objectivity, which is that of peace.